If you're wondering whether to get the Fujifilm X106 or the Ricoh GR3, potentially the HDF, potentially the X version, you're at the right video. In this video, we're going to talk all about the current GR3 versions, as well as how they compare to the X106. This morning, I learned at my local camera shop, BJ Photo, here in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, they were saying that even with the release of the new HDF, a lot of people don't actually want to spend the extra money for a feature that they won't potentially use. That HDF is the highlight diffusion filter. And there's a lot of people still putting orders in on the GR3 and the GR3X. If you're not sure what the difference is between the new HDF, we have both of them right here, and the original GR3, something I actually didn't know, but it makes a lot of sense, is that the HDF filter actually replaces the ND filter. So if you get an HDF version, there is no internal ND. You get the fancy HDF mist instead. HDF, as long as you're not German, stands for Highlight Diffusion Filter, which is a mist filter. And I don't know if they give an intensity on it, but it feels kind of like a quarter mist filter. In the daytime, it's very nice, but at nighttime with lights, it could be very intense. I'm probably gonna stay away from the lounge liver and foie gras. And after narrowly avoiding that, we are on our way to Florence, Italy, way up north. Conference that I'm speaking at, the conference that's great, you should come to the next one. And it's gonna be in Portugal. There's still tickets available. And my wife, Lindsay, is speaking at it. Wayupnorth.co if you're interested. This is the least amount of camera gear I've ever brought on a trip, which is amazing. I brought the two versions of the HDF and Lindsay brought the X106 with her. And wow, did it feel nice to not have lots of large mirrorless cameras and lenses with me and just these two cameras in my pockets. I'll also mention that all of these JPEGs are straight out of camera that you're seeing, but I did use my own custom film simulation, but more on that in a minute. My local camera shop also said that the X version is more popular than the regular. Maybe let's talk about that first. So the GR3 comes in two focal lengths, the 28 millimeter and the 40 millimeter. Both are F2.8 lenses and the 40 millimeter is just a little bit more expensive. Going into this trip, I thought that the GR3X, which is the 40 millimeter version, was going to be my preferred focal length. But as it turns out, it is an absolute toss up between the 28 and the 40. Sorry to probably confuse you further if you're here to try to differentiate which one you should actually get. I feel like this is the place that Rico puts us into a little paralysis where both options are great and it's really hard to pick just one. With the Fujifilm X106, it comes just as a 35 millimeter equivalent lens. So you have no options. Well, you have some options, we'll talk about them in a moment. And I'll mention that both of these cameras are APS-C, so I'm talking in 35 millimeter equivalents. This video also comes from the perspective of a photographer that really values a portable camera for travel and street, but also something that's great at the variety of tasks I do from here creating YouTube videos to creating prints that we'll put up on our wall to potentially creating something to sell also. My main job is that of a wedding photographer and I don't think any of these cameras are the ideal tool for a main camera for that line of work. Maybe as a second or third camera, but there are definitely better cameras for weddings. Check out the rest of the channel if you wanna see my gear recommendations for weddings in this current year. I also have 75 full length wedding days behind the scenes up on YouTube as well. The reason I'm making this specific comparison is because both of these cameras are hard to get and it's unlikely that you're going to have access to rent and to try them out. So hopefully this gives you some clarity on at least my preferences and some things to consider when making your purchasing decision. In a perfect world, you probably own all three of these cameras, but that's not reasonable. Though I do know a few people that own both versions of the GR3, which makes for a very powerful travel and street kit. For the Fujifilm X106, it comes in a 35 millimeter equivalent, but there are official adapters to make your camera either into a 28 millimeter or a 50 millimeter. They do come at an extra cost as well as extra size, and also adding more glass will have some sort of an effect on image quality. Now let's talk about differences that actually matter to me and hopefully to you. First, image quality. They're both fantastic. The Fujifilm simulations edge out the Ricoh's out of the box offerings in my opinion, but you can create your own custom simulations in both cameras. Jason Vong turned me on to this amazing Portra 400 recipe from thomasography.com for the GR3 with the mist diffusion filter in the HDF. It is very, very nice. It's so nice that most of the images, or maybe all the images so far, are shot on this Portra 400 in-camera look that I've set up with HDF turned on. On my Fujifilm X106, I'm usually in classic NAG film simulation with classic Chrome being my second favorite. And both of these sims, as well as all the other film sims, are just incredible right out of the box. And you don't really have to tweak them. You can if you want, you can make your own recipe, but out of the box, I am very, very happy. There's also a difference in image size, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Next up, the physical size. The Ricoh is significantly smaller. 
and travels with you easier. This is actually the most minimal kit I've ever brought on a trip. The Fujifilm X106 is by no means a large camera and still fits comfortably in a jacket pocket, but it is for sure larger. For the larger X106, you do get a few things. One, you get a viewfinder. The hybrid optical and electronic viewfinder of the X106 is really, really nice. With the Ricoh, you get a screen with an optical viewfinder attachment if you want to pay extra money for it. Now, weirdly, there is a certain authority that comes with using a larger camera. If I am at a wedding and I brought the Ricoh out, I would probably not really be considered a professional, but the size of this, I feel like you can get away with it. The X106 is also very much a fashion piece as well. Strangers and friends will talk to you about it, and probably only other photographers are ever going to talk to you about the Ricoh. Now, there are also times when having a small profile camera is better. So neither one is better or worse for this, it's just personal preference. The X106 comes with a flash. The Ricoh has a hot shoe, but you can get a flash. This one's really big and weighs a lot, so don't use this flash. But you can find a smaller option, they're out there. I find the built-in flash from the X106 to be incredibly helpful, and I use it a lot more than I expected. One thing to note, if you are using one of the wide-angle adapters or even this additional lens hood, the flash will get blocked a bit and will create that weird shadow halo. If Ricoh was able to add a flash back to this camera like they had on some of the film cameras, I think that this camera would be something even more incredible than it already is. The next difference, the dials. This is a big selling feature for the X106, and it's weirdly something that I don't really use. As soon as I got it out of the box, I set the front and back dials to control my shutter speed, my aperture, and my ISO. Having that front and back wheel in a very comfortable spot, it's very, very nice. And I tend to use my X106 in manual mode most of the time because I find some of the automatic choices the X106 makes to be a little bit different than what I'm after. When it comes to shooting with the Ricoh, I am typically automating a lot more of the settings. And I actually leave the Ricoh back wheel here to exposure compensation and use that a lot. Overall, I'm very, very happy with the Ricoh choices. Now, a quick section on video. I'm going to guess that most people looking at either of these cameras are not looking at them as a video camera, but I'm here to tell you that the X106 is an incredible video camera. And if I'm going for a walk or getting B-roll or this entire project we shot in Japan last month, this camera was actually my first choice. Yes, even above the Sony a7 IV or the Sony a9 Mark III that I'm filming this on. And then it comes to the sad panda moment where the Ricoh does video, but just HD. Um, wouldn't really consider it to be a video tool. The Fujifilm for sure wins this. Stabilization. They all have it, but the Fujifilm X106 is definitely better overall. The original GR3 and GR3X came with that internal ND filter, but HDF versions do not. The Fujifilm X106 comes with an internal ND. And if you like that soft highlight look, you can buy a pretty low profile mist filter for it. I use a quarter mist filter a lot on my X106. Next difference, megapixels. Ricoh is a 24 megapixel camera, whereas the Fujifilm X106 is 40 megapixels. This gives you a lot more of an ability to crop and post. You can even set the front ring on your Fujifilm X106 to crop into the frame and give you that telephoto field of view rather than using the adapter. That all said, I personally don't crop a whole lot and I'm very happy with the 24 megapixels of the Ricohs. Next real life difference, the screen. The Fuji screen tilts and it moves. The Ricoh screen does not. I would love to see a tilt screen integrated into this for the GR4 that hopefully is coming someday and I feel like it's pretty high on everyone's wish list. Next difference, the cost. Well, the X106 is incredibly difficult to get. So if you can get one, you're probably going to be spending more than the retail price. The retail price is 1600 US, but right now it seems like most are going for 2000 or even more. The Ricoh is also a little hard to get, but much easier than the X106. The regular GR3 comes in at $966 USD right now, whereas the HDF is $100 more at 1066. Then the GR3X HDF is another $80 more expensive. So yes, at the time of recording this, you can basically get two of these for the same cost you're going to be spending on an X106. Now, to HDF or to not HDF. If the Ricoh GR3 was a great video camera, I would probably prefer to have the ND filter rather than the mist filter. But since the Ricoh is not likely going to be my first choice for video coverage, I actually prefer the HDF. Mixed with that Portra 400 custom film simulation and soft highlights, it makes for really, really nice, pleasing images. If you don't like this look at all, I'm wrong and it's not the right camera for you. So which of these cameras is right for you? It all comes down to if you're looking for a powerful, minimal stills camera that actually fits in your pocket, in your pants pocket all year, 
or if you're looking for a feature rich all around workhorse of a camera that looks great and is still relatively small, it does fit into a jacket pocket, but not into your pants. If cost is a factor, there are used Ricoh GR3s and GR3Xs available for less than retail, while secondhand, you're probably looking at more than retail for an X106. For me, I really, really like all of these cameras, but if I had to pick, it would in fact be the X106 because of its video features. If video is not important to me, I would be very, very happy going Ricoh GR3 instead. When it comes to a trip like this one in Italy, I'm actually very happy with a camera that fits into my pocket easily. I take it to a lot more places and end up coming across a lot more photographic opportunities.